Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather on this Lenten Friday, let us uh, repent of our faults, let us repent of our weaknesses, let us repent of our very sins, and turn towards the Lord, recognizing his very uh, lordship over our lives, and dismissing the other gods, that of health, that of wealth, that of any other desires or earthly wants. Let us turn to the Lord our God. And so we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, we pray, O Lord, that we may be constantly drawn away from unruly desires and obey by your own gift the heavenly teaching you give us through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with you words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good, that we may render in, as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel, he shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again, they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he had to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like the verdant cypress tree. Because of me, you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, in them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. I am the Lord your God, hear, hear my, my voice. voice. An unfamiliar speech I hear. I relieved his shoulder of the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. Unseen I answered you in thunder, I tested you in the waters of Meribah. Hear my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, you, will you not hear me? I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship an alien God. I, the Lord, am your God. 
who led you forth from the land of Egypt. I, I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. If only my people would hear me, and Israel walk in my ways, I would feed them with the best of wheat, and with honey from the rock would fill them. I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to, him with, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Boys the Gospels of York, <clears throat> As you are aware, uh, in the liturgy, we had a, a slight modification to the translation of the collect that we hear at Mass each day. Uh, in the liturgy, <clears throat> we have uh, um, an organization of the reading of sacred scripture. We call that the lectionary, and it's a lectionary that uh, has, been, uh, has been established since, since the Second Vatican Council, and there's an order to all of the readings throughout the liturgical year. So we have the lectionary and we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the Roman Missal. It used to be called the sacramentary, but there was a, there was a, um, a change to uh, many of the uh, translations in English just, uh, what, 10 years ago or so, maybe even less. And so it went from the sacramentary, which is, was similar to that same book, and that was used um, in, in our worship, divine worship, also since the Second Vatican Council. Um, and so that's called the Roman Missal. So we have the lectionary, we have the Roman Missal. And the Roman Missal has all of the prayers of, um, of the celebration of the Mass. There's the heart of it is the order of the Mass. You know, what I say, what I do, what actions I take. Where are my hands extended? Are my hands folded? Are my hands placed over the offering? You see, it's all directed. And in the red, it says what the priest is to do, what the people are to say. And in the black, it says the words that we're supposed to share. So, do the red, say the black. Uh, we have a lot of funky priests around as well who like to kind of mix it up. And that can become a bit of a, that can become a, bit of a challenge. <laughs> But there is a certain uniformity because we all share the same book. And, and, and so there is a universal worship that is moderated by, um, by, by the Word of God, that is moderated by these structures and this order. And that helps us recognize and, and to share together in the action of divine worship. To do so, whether we find ourselves here in Agawam or across the river in Longmeadow, or up in Springfield, or out in Adams in the Berkshires where Father Barron's going, or even across the country, out in Texas and California and the like. And the English language world shares this translation. And 
The Spanish language world is also working on its translation because there are different translations in Mexico and Colombia and, and other parts that were most often used. And they're also looking to have a unified um, text in the Spanish language. And that was one of the challenges after the Second Vatican Council when there was a permission to move from the universal language that was Latin, that was a language that was heard whether you were in the United States or in France or in Somalia, Zimbabwe, China, Australia, everyone heard the same words. Maybe they didn't understand it. Maybe they didn't understand what was being said. But it was the same action and the same words that could be shared of, of, of men and women of faith universally around the world. But because there was such difficulty in understanding, and, 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 and we got away from recognizing Latin as a universal language, it became a mysterious one. It became almost an ancient, or even some would call it a dead language. And, and in the wisdom of Holy Mother Church, she decided that maybe we should translate the prayers of the Mass into the vernacular language, into the familiar language of the people where they are. But perhaps we, beget, we lost a little bit of the sense of universality. That is, it is the same Mass, it is the same Catholic um, prayer that is being prayed. So just a couple of fundamentals. When, because the whole point of this homily is to get to the most recent little adjustment in the translation that was done. And that little adjustment is when we say the collect. Again, coming back to the order of the Mass. The collect is the prayer, it used to be called the opening prayer. But it's not just an opening prayer. It's not just a prayer that opens the liturgy. No, it's the prayer that collects all of our intentions and orients us towards this act of worship today in this Mass. It, it, it collects all of the intentions that you bring that are deep within your own hearts to our God. It's called the Collect. And in the Collect, we hear it. There's a different Collect for each day of Lent. There's a different Collect for each Sunday and, and, uh, and solemnities. And those are part of the proper prayers of the Mass. They change because the Lord is always inviting us to grow deeper and, and, to, and to speak to Him in His words and to recognize something of our relationship with the Lord our God. And the collect we close through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. See here, I mean, it's not something. <laughs> through our Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And sometimes you can even see how I, if I don't have, the, if I'm not in the, in the action of the, of the Mass, if I'm not in the action of the worship, I forget the words, because it's not something that you do just by rote repetition. No, it's something that you do proper and distinct for that moment. So even, even trying to recall it without actually praying that prayer, I forget the words, which gives me consolation that maybe when I pray, I'm still praying with great intention, even though I've said those words every single day for years and years and years. But coming back to this final doxology, these few words giving glory to God. Our prayers are oriented to God our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. In unity, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And we used to say one God, and that was a sort of mistranslation from almost 60 years ago. Because if the prayer is oriented through Christ, if the prayer is oriented through Christ, well, He is not one God, and the Father is another God, and the Holy Spirit is another God. No, if the prayer, if the focus of that 
doxology, that the focus of that prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, He is God forever and ever. So we, we no longer say one. God is one. And He's three persons. God is one. And that prayer that we say, the collect, is oriented to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. And you see how there's this constant relationship with the one God. There's this constant relationship with each of the persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when we think of God, we try to define Him. We try to give shape to Him. And isn't, wouldn't we then be trying to limit Him? How can you define the infinite? How can you limit the unlimited? And we hear in our readings today how the Lord is calling us back to worship of Himself. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands. We shall no longer make idols for ourselves and other gods. The Lord our God is our God. Because we can make gods of other things. We can make gods of other circumstances. We can make gods of the state. We can make gods of our health and our own personal sense of well-being. We can make gods because what is a god but one we worship? And what is it that we worship? Our good health? What is it that we worship? Our security in this life? Or is God the Father in heaven? through Christ Jesus our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit our God, the one true God, God who is, God who always will be and has been, and God who unites us into a relationship with Himself, again through Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. But it's easy for us to make up other gods or to worship other gods, other earthly delights, other earthly securities, other earthly desires. And the Lord is crying out to us, I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. How many of our people cannot hear the voice of God because they're so busy with these other earthly gods, these other earthly things of their worship, their desires? I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. And this season of Lent, this Friday that we participate in, in a particular acts of penance, we engage in the stations of the cross, we remember the three o'clock hour, we do all these different simple actions to always dispel of ourselves these other attachments, these other worships of God's, and turn to the Lord our God, to the one God, to the true God. The Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The first and greatest commandment, as we heard in the Gospel today, Christ Jesus is very clear. That's it. Love the Lord your God with your whole self. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God, we point up high, but he's not up there in the clouds. <laughs> he's, he's higher than ourselves. He's the supreme being. He's, he's infinite. And we turn towards the Lord. And we have, there's, I, there's me and there's God. And that's a great relationship. The first and foremost relationship. But guess what? The Lord has also been so generous and kind that He's made all of my family and friends my neighbor as myself. So with my relationship with the one true God, 
then I am in also relationship with my neighbor as myself. As myself. The other as myself. You and I. Us together. You and I. This relationship that is abiding. And so, dear friends, after this longish homily, I just invite you to recognize who is God in your life and also recognize what are some other gods in your life? Whose word do you trust perhaps more than the word of God? Whom do you worship with the very sacrifices of your daily living? And we can recognize that we do have other gods that call for our attention. But let us not allow these other attachments that we are trying to, as it were, dispel ourselves of. Keep us from the Lord our God. He is our God. Amen. So, dear friends, let us stand and bring our prayers before this very Lord our God. In, in the very name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him, sustain him, and protect him from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in leadership throughout the world, may the God of justice guide them in living out their duties with wisdom and a sense of service to all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the oppressed, may God's love and healing embrace them with their suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the Holy Spirit give us wisdom to understand all that God teaches and grace to receive Christ's help in our struggles, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they find joy and love in the eternal kingdom of, of God. And especially today, we pray for Father Howard McCormick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of remembrance, those we have been asked to pray for, and those we lift up from the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful and loving God, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers, for we raise them through your only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With the most spirit of the Lord, set by the Lord, and sacrifice you, set the two of us into my blood. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, Lord, on the offerings we dedicate, that they may be pleasing in your sight and always salutary for us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, Son of the God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world. For me, by this your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil, keep me always faithful to your commandments and never departed from you. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 body of Christ the 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 body of Christ. 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 To love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself is worth more than any sacrifice.
pestle which is full of it, may possess and purify heart that was given to us and time may be, what has been given to us and time may be. Let us pray. May your strength be at work in us, O Lord, pervading our minds and bodies, that what we have received by participating in this sacrament may bring us the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I apologize for the, uh, uh, the length of today's Mass, but I thought it was worthwhile to share a little bit about uh, so many things. <laughs> Um, such is our life. The Lord gives us time to be able to come to consider the great mystery of our being in Him, of our life in God. So let us pray well to, today and every day, especially as we draw closer to Lent. Uh, just a word, I know that today uh, Bishop Byrne will be at Planned Parenthood, as I understand it. It was asked that I share uh, the, the news that he'll be at Planned Parenthood praying for those uh, persons who, who struggle and and um, and and and. and, and, and struggle with the decisions that they make uh, in worldly affairs. So he'll be praying, um, and, and he invites you to pray with him, I'm sure, as well as each of us having the, uh, the care for our neighbor as ourselves. So please uh, join him in prayer, either in person or in spirit, as he prays uh, for those undergoing that particularly difficult test of love. And uh, next week, Father Berent will be away, uh, and the following week I'll be away but uh, I know that there's still conversation about the sign of peace, so I know that's a little difficult, but we're still waiting to, uh, to be able to initiate that, but we want to be sure that everyone uh, will be on the same page about what that sign of peace is to be and how we express it uh, to our neighbor as ourselves. So um, thank you for your patience and, and continuing, um, continuing dialogue about that um, part of the liturgy. Good. Stations of the Cross immediately following Mass, and as well as this evening, you are always welcome. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the faithful who implore your mercy, that, trusting in your kindness, they may spread far and wide the gifts your charity has bestowed through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist, all holy men and women, pray for us.